Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Sarika Gupta, and uh, I'm Senior Consultant Cardiology Oncology and Robotic Gynecology at Impress Apollo, Delhi. This study is from uh, Florida Cancer Institute, Orlando. And uh, this is our experience on robotic-assisted laparoscopic hysterectomy, periodic lipnectomy, following chemo radiation for stage 1B2 cervical cancer. So we all know that locally advanced cervical cancer has a high rate of recurrence and moderate dose radiation therapy followed by surgery was very prevalent uh, early 1960s to, uh, nine, to 1990. So I have picked a few historical papers. Uh, this one was published in 1976. And this was the first paper who uh, depicted the role of operative uh, of operation in stage one and two uh, cervi cervical cancer after radiation therapy. So this paper uh, showed that the vasculature that the vasculature of the center of these bulky or barrel shaped cancer is insufficient, and this population of cancer cell cells is more resistant to irradiation. So, but the, finally, this study showed that the survival rates were not improved by surgery followed by radiation therapy. Now this is another paper that was published in Cancer 1985. In this paper, they studied 75 subjects, 32 were uh, underwent radiation therapy only, and 43 were treated by radiation followed by extrafacial hysterectomy. The incidence, the results, uh, they observed that the incidence of pelvic recurrence was reduced from 19% to 2% and extra pelvic recurrence from 16% to 7% in patients treated by combination therapy with, minimums, with minimal side effects. So there was no rectal urinary tract fistula uh, noted after extrafacial hysterectomy. So after this, there were an there were array of uh, studies and this became, a, uh, this was practiced at, at many institutes, including MD Anderson for many years till 1990 with the rationale that preoperative tumor is more susceptible to radiation therapy, it downstages the tumor and reduces uh, chances of positive margins. It has the potential to reduce the spread of cancer during surgery, improved tolerance as compared to post-operative radiation, potential to lessen the central recurrence, and uh, less need for excentration. So after this, this is a study that was published in Gynecology Oncology in 1980. So you can see that they gave guidelines for conservative hysterectomy after irradiation. So quoting the paper, the prerequisite for successful, uh, successful adjuvant uh, surgery without significant complications are absence of PID before initiation of therapy, conservative external radiation dose, uh, with the cautious application and loading of intracavitary system and meticulous surgical technique using sharp dissection and precautionary measures to avoid infection uh, during recuperation. So after this, GOG conducted a trial in uh, 2000, that was published in 2003 in gynecologic oncology. This was performed by Dr. Keyes. They randomized 256 stage 1B2 patients uh, 124 received radiation therapy only and 132 received radiation therapy with hysterectomy. So the adjusted uh, relative risk of progression of disease was significantly less in uh, radiation followed by surgery group. So these, uh, these cases were adjusted as per the tumor size, performance status, and age of the patient. So uh, the, the estimated, the adjusted relative risk of uh, death was comparable in both the groups. So the results, the conclusion was that there was no difference in grade three and grade four adverse effects. So most of the people here actually have, would be say, uh, know about Landini trial that surgery followed by radiation has more complications, but this, this was a random, randomized trial and it uh, the results were that there are no difference in grade three and grade four adverse effects when you give radiation followed by surgery. The progression rate was lesser, but there was no effect on survival. So this was a slide where I showed that the NCCN guideline, the, this is a category, there's, this is still a category three uh, uh, recommendation, and that's why it is in controversy, and this brings more research, and, and why not, because uh, and why? Because new adjuvant radiation is routinely used in locally advanced rectal cancer, esophageal cancer, and stomach cancer. And maybe there is some role in cervical cancer also. So this slide shows that, uh, that 
it, it is another option. It is one of the options for the patient because it is acceptably safe and the overall survival and DFS is similar. With less vaginal morbidity, less chances of central relapse and gives us a, a parabiotic assessment opportunity. This showed us the retrospective data. Uh, the retrospective data, there are multiple studies, at least 10 or 12, that show that the, that the morbidity is the grade 3 and grade 4 morbidity is between 5 to 15 percent in, uh, in neoadjuvant radiation therapy followed by surgery and the survival and the survival is uh, between 70 to 90 percent. So these were two slides which we, where I showed the review of literature. There are two tables. So this is, uh, this is the review of literature. The, uh, the overall survival ranges between 70 to 90 percent. Now you can see that the, uh, that the stage these studies have varied stages. So we cannot compare the overall survival in between the studies. Uh, and the type of hysterectomy al also varies. Like type 2, few of the studies were uh, included radical hysterectomy, few also had exenterative procedures. This is our own study from our, from our institution in, at Orlando. This, is our op uh, this was done by open technique chemo radiation followed by adjuvant hysterectomy for stage 1B2 cervical cancer. 10 year experience. This was published in Gynecologic Oncology 2012. And we studied 69 patients. The mean uh, time to progression was 31 months. The Kaplan Meyer estimated five year survival was 81 percent. Pelvic control was 97 percent. No central relapse and no exenterative procedures were needed for stage 1B2. We detected 16 percent periotic lymph node metastasis that were missed by CT scan. The distant relapse rate uh, was 20 percent. Now this has been the adjuvant hysterectomy has been tried by laparoscopic route 2. So in that, uh, in the review of literature, there are four studies that have been done by laparoscopically, Galota, Columba, uh, Morris et al, and Effort. So this is one study, laparoscopic adjuvant hysterectomy. They studied 60, uh, they studied 58 patient. Conversion rate was 55.2. Grade 3 morbidity only in 14%. And disease recurrence in 6.9%. This is another recent study uh, uh, done, lapar uh, which compared lapar uh, laparoscopic adjuvant hysterectomy with, uh, uh, with the laparotomy. And uh, this study uh, showed that the quality of life at one week after surgery was much better than the patient, was much better for patients with laparoscopy as compared to laparotomy. Intraoperative and postoperative complications were similar and cost at one month uh, was comparable. And seeing these cases, actually we tried, we start uh, doing these cases uh, robotically. Now, why we did it? Because of the vaginal morbidity, sexual dysfunction is a long-term distress for cervical cancer survivors. Definitive chemo radiation therapy, even with image-guided adapted brachytherapy, uh, has produces 29% percent grade two vaginal, more than 29% uh, uh, cases with grade two vaginal morbidity. So this is from Embrace study, which is which uh, Tata Memorial was also part of the study, and this is a multi-institutional study that was published in 2014. Now decreased rate, the decreasing the dose contribution of brachytherapy to vagina decreases the risk of stenosis. So if we do new adjuvant uh, radiation therapy at a reduced dose, we can actually reduce the incidence of vaginal morbidity. And this has been shown by our earlier study in which we did open adjuvant hysterectomy. So big speed 2012. Now parabiotic uh, assessment, adjuvant uh, surgery gives an additional uh, opportunity of parabiotic assess, uh, assessment. PET scan or PET CD scan is inaccurate in detecting microscopic tumor volumes, and this has been proved multiple times. I have actually given references for a few of the studies, and the most important is the randomized controls trial that was published in uh, American Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology by Kohler, and another Cochrane database, which suggests that the surgical that surgical staging of periotic lymph node can detect 4 to 15 percent of PET negative patients. And operative staging leads to upstaging in 33 percent. Now, why not, if, if we have another option, then why not give this option to the patient? They improve psychological satisfaction of removing the primary side of tumor. So this is a study where we actually, uh, to determine the surgical and oncological outcome for patients with 1B2 cervical cancer treated by uh, concurrent cisplatin whole pelvic radiation, high dose uh, HDR brachytherapy, robotic hysterectomy, and parabiotic lymphectomy. So 27 patients were taken who were PET negative. All patients received whole pelvic chemo radiation, 45 to 50 to 50 gray, HDR brachytherapy, 15 to 24 gray, in three to four fractions, followed by radical hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo with parabiotic lymphectomy, six to eight weeks after radiation. 
Now this table shows that uh, that the pre-radiation tumors are most important. It was uh, the average was 5.3 plus minus one. Post-operative tumor size was 4.4. And this is clinical examination. Clinical examination after six weeks of radiation therapy. And most of our patients were squamous cell carcinoma, 55%. Operative time, console time, 124 minutes. Estimated blood loss, 70 minutes. And residual carcinoma, see, 64% of the patients with adenocarcinoma has residual disease in the pathological sample. And 35% of patients with squamous cell carcinoma had residual disease in the pathological sample after six to eight weeks of radiation therapy. None had positive margins. Three patients had, were aortic, uh, aortic node positive even after PET negative, uh, after being PET negative. Mean follow-up was 34 months. Now here, we the oncological outcome, pelvic, Pelvic relapse only one. After three years of therapy, after three years of surgery, two distant relapse, one in the lung and the other one in the lung and in the parioidic area. Three patients died of disease in which one actually refused the treatment. One patient with distant metastasis refused treatment. And this is how we have three patients who died. This is compl these are complications. So 37% had grade one bladder dysfunction, vaginal cell cellulitis in one patient, and lymphocele requiring drain in one patient. Transfusion, facial and GI adverse effects, and no vaginal stenosis. And concluding that robotic hysterectomy following chemo radiation and brachytherapy is feasible with minimal complications. Grade three complications only in 11.1%. Adjoint hysterectomy causes central uh, may reduce the central recurrence by removing residual tumor. Parioidic lymph node assessment allows identification in 11.1% of uh, our, uh, patients. An adjuvant parioidic radiation to these subset of patients, as we did in our study, might potentially reduce parioidic recurrences. Thank you.